Well, the coronavirus may have shut down professional sports, but that doesn't mean we can't talk to our favorite sports guy. JB is joining us from his home in Maryland because, of course, we are practicing social distancing. So that means that we're from our home studios, but also it means there's a little bit of a delay uh, when we talk. But JB, it is really, really good to see you. JB, now, Anne-Marie, you know I am too dark to blush. But I do miss you guys very, very much and hope soon to be able to see you in person. <laughs> So listen, you know, despite the fact that, uh, you know, professional sports is basically sort of ground to a halt, there's no basketball, there's no hockey, there's no baseball. Now, there is one professional league that is looking to start things up. I think we're talking about the boys of summer, right? You know what? So I will say this. I guess the headline will be, cautiously putting one's toes in the water. Um, it's actually the PGA Tour of America Professional Golfers Association. They're going to put their toes into the water, uh, Anne-Marie, on June the 11th. PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan said they were going to give it a shot. They're going to go Thursday through Sunday, as is typical. Uh, but there will be no spectators, no gallery there. And they, of course, will be maintaining social distancing, uh, which actually is a little easier in the sport of golf because most golf courses average between 150 to 200 yards, so there's plenty of space uh, for the players, their caddies, and necessary personnel to be able to maintain that space. And, but you bet for sure that the other professional uh, leagues uh, and organizations will be taking a close look at how this, how this comes off. Mm. I, I I always thought Amory the Boys of Summer was a Don Henley song, but I could be wrong. Um, let me ask you. No, it's supposed to be about, uh, uh, the baseball players too. Baseball had kind of oh, okay. kind of floated the idea of maybe starting a little bit early, but it looks like the golfers are gonna take the lead. Well that was my second guess. And you know what uh, Amory and the PGA and so Vlad, I wasn't sure. Yeah, so Anne-Marie and Vlad, um, the other leagues have been taking a look at it, but I think out of an abundance and caution, of caution, and it makes perfect sense because you're talking about closed-in stadiums uh, with baseball, uh, with basketball, et cetera, and, and with football. So it makes all the sense in the world to let the um, let medical science take the lead in making those decisions. Hmm. All right, so JB, let me ask you about the NBA. They were the first league to cancel games. It seems like ages ago, when Utah Jazz All-Star Rudy Gobert was uh, announced as the first player to contract coronavirus. What are you hearing about the NBA? Well, you know what? They have been extremely cautious um, and quick to act. Give uh, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver an awful lot of credit right now and that there are more than the seven reported players in the NBA who have tested um, positive for coronavirus, but they've been extremely proactive. I guess the big news with respect to them, uh, the players and the Players Association have agreed that there will be a 25% reduction in pay for the players because, in fact, the way the contract is structured with the uh, force majeure, uh, if you will, unforeseeable circumstances that will prevent one side from living up to contractual obligations, uh, they could just not pay the players at all. The players and the league have been very proactive in supporting arena workers, uh, averaging some $1 million per team to ensure that these hourly uh, wage earners are, in fact, covered, hopefully, uh, through what should be a, what is hoped to be a soon time to get back to action. But there's been nothing definitive decided about that. Hmm. So uh, speaking about the NBA, there's a new 10-part uh, documentary out about, um, about uh, Michael Jordan and the 97-98 and uh, Chicago Bulls. It's getting a lot of buzz. It seems like, at least on the social media platforms that I'm on, a lot of people have been watching it and, and, and commenting. Um, what can you tell us about that? That was the trending topic on social media. Make no mistake about it. Amory and Vlad, a whole new generation of uh, folks can get to see who this guy was, it, most people consider to be the greatest player ever. I would at least say arguably the best player ever. But um, the NBA entertainment division, if you will, followed Michael Jordan around in what was to be um, their pursuit of their sixth NBA championship in, in the last season. And it's entitled The Last Dance, airing on ESPN last Sunday. When it aired, it was the number one show, uh, averaging some 6.1 million viewers 
It averaged a 12 in Chicago, and the second highest ratings were in Michael Jordan's home state of North Carolina. So it will be a 10-part series, and um, it's been pretty fascinating. One of the more interesting aspects of it is Michael Jordan was the first to own the rights to his image and likeness. So even though the league did a great job of convincing the league to be able to show, uh, follow Michael and the organization, Michael had to sign off on it. And it's interesting that some 23 years later, Michael Jordan's number is when this is airing. It was to have aired in June, but they moved it up because of the NBA season right now on hold. Hmm. And of course, JB, it is also still fascinating that he continues to, galv to, to, to galvanize um, and to amaze people, even if you know the story, even if you know how the season ended, the fact that six million people tuned in uh, to watch the first uh, episode of this documentary series is very, very remarkable. Hey, Vlad, I was about uh, a young reporter about your size back then, and I was covering <laughs> the NBA and was really blessed to be there for some of his iconic shots. You remember when Michael Jordan hit that jumper over Craig Elo and Michael was pumping his arms. I was there and the first reporter to get up to him. I did the games, you know, with Magic Johnson and Michael. It really was an awesome time. And now again, so many others who weren't a part of that era get a chance to live it again in this documentary that at least from the first week, the ratings have been absolutely sensational. The most watched documentary content ever on ESPN. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and we're just showing these incredible images of, yeah. Before we let you go, i got to ask you about a great gesture by a Hall of Fame basketball coach for the frontline workers uh, during this pandemic. What can you tell us about this? Well, well, you know what? Tom Izzo, the Hall of Fame basketball coach at Michigan State, his next-door neighbor, Stephen um, uh, Scofis, and his daughter, Mackenzie, had the idea of having Tom Izzo front and effort since there was no March Madness. You know, the N N NCAA championship was to have been held a couple of weeks ago. So they wanted to salute all of the frontline workers and healthcare workers. That's how the idea came about. Take a look at this. 20 years ago, I had the honor of lifting this national championship trophy. And while Michigan State was hoping to win it again this year, the real national champions are the healthcare and frontline workers. You are heroes to all of us. You are truly our national champions, and America thanks you from the bottom of our heart. And Anne-Marie and Vlad, I'm sure because you guys are so uh, entrenched in the news daily, I'm, I'm certain that it doesn't get um, tiring at all to see Americans really saluting those who's, who are literally putting their lives on the line for uh, all in this COVID-19 climate right now. And just an excellent move by uh, Tom Izzo. And again, want to give a lot of credit to the Scofasis, whose idea it was, because those are absolute heroes. Good move by Tom Izzo. What a beautiful gesture. Uh, and as you say, JB, uh, we think about our frontline uh, medical professionals and not just them, uh, the folks who are essential workers who uh, every day put their lives at risk either to protect us in the case of first responders, to save us in the case of medical professionals, and to essentially make sure that we are able to go uh, shopping and get food on our tables uh, or get our mail. And it's beautiful to see that gesture uh, from Coach Izzo. And it's great to see you, JB. I've missed you, my man. <laughs> hey, I'm just so thankful that you and Anne-Marie didn't segue into my segment with the story about artistically designed or aesthetically designed commodes. I love you guys very much. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to live that one down. <laughs> oh, no. That's well, ingrained know, here. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. We, we, we're hey, going to see I, you next I, week, so so that, that's a tease. We'll see well, you next week, and maybe we will talk you, about it if, then. If, if you and Anne-Marie want to send me a gift of one, I'll take it. So. 